Some game enemies are just way too easy and you forget about them right away. Some are just way overpowered and you spend so much time trying to get away from them you can't forget. Hi folks, it's Falcon and today on Game Ranks, 10 overpowered enemies we all ran away from. Number 10 is the Dahaka from Prince of Persia, Warrior Within. You could also call him the Guardian of Time and it makes sense. His purpose in the narrative of the game is of course to repair the timeline which has been irreparably damaged by the prince who has been time traveling and doing awesome stuff. So essentially, you're going through the game and from time to time Dahaka will just appear and you need to get away from him because he'll frickin' murder you. Although to be fair, these sequences are some of the more exhilarating in the game. It's kind of just a mad dash across a bunch of different obstacles to elude something that is very clearly a mysterious force that can drop you. But eventually, he's a boss in the game too. He's not somebody you can kill either, you have to knock him into some water, which is basically his weakness. He's one of those enemies where after you actually do kill him, it's like a massive relief. It's one of those things where a game just does such a good job of making you feel what the character feels. I actually, for this reason, really like the Dahaka. Number 9 is Resident Evil 3's Nemesis, which, I mean, you'll fight him again and again, and you basically can't kill him, at least until later in the game. The scenes with him are kind of a combination of running away from him and fighting him, and all of the defeats are temporary, except of course the last one. He is a bit of a beefy boy too, he's big, and you can just unload clips of ammunition on him before anything even seems to vaguely phase him. And that's what you have to do, keep dodging, keep running, keep staying away from him until you basically phase him enough that you can walk away. There's only one thing this guy says and it's STARS. It's the name of the team you're on, which <laughs> When you have the Resident Evil equivalent of the Terminator constantly coming at you and that's the one word it can say, you're just kind of like, oh, yeah, enough, guys, stop talking. Number eight is Anima from The Evil Within 2, which is basically a manifestation of, I don't know how to explain it without giving too much away, but the process of the game, basically. And as she keeps manifesting herself to you, you have to completely avoid her because she kills you instantly if you don't. She's basically an otherworldly scary lady that you think, oh, I've heard that before, that doesn't scare me, and then you play the game and you're like, oh wait, mm, actually, I, I think this is bringing my heart rate up. Yeah. What's particularly scary is A, you, the victim of her, are the only one who can see her at any given time. She levitates, she has telekinesis, and like I said, will kill you instantly if she finds you. You basically have to stealth your way around her, tiptoe, make sure you're not noticed, and eventually get away from her. And that's it. That's your only option. If you try anything else, you die. Number seven is the Xenomorph from Alien Isolation, and in some ways, it's not really that different from Anima. You really cannot defeat the Xenomorph, not until the end of the game when it's not really a boss fight or anything like that. It's just a natural element of the story. During the course of the game, this thing will stalk you, this thing will figure out your movements and anticipate where you're hiding, and in some respects, learns from how the player is going. And let's just go ahead and say, Alien Isolation is a difficult and unforgiving game, and and earned the reputation that it got. It's a well-made experience that frankly does not want you to get off easy at any point, and it doesn't. Sure, you can do things to kind of scare off the Xenomorph or ditch the Xenomorph or, you know, non-final things. The Xenomorph is an always looming threat. There is never a time you're rid of it. And that's really why that game is so good too. That's the feeling that we've never really gotten from any kind of video game adaption of Alien. Do we wanna bring up Colonial Marines here? Do we wanna do that? Yeah, no, this version of Alien is the good version in video games. It's such a testament to how interesting AI can make an enemy character too. And although it is certainly overpowered, it's the right kind of overpowered. Number six is Marta from Outlast 2. Now where you can't kill the Xenomorph in Alien Isolation, you can certainly try. You're not doing that with Marta. You're only carrying around a camcorder and your main weapon is night vision. So when Marta shows up to chase you around, A, it's in the dark, and B, it's in an area that she and the cult she's a part of know a little better than you. The thing about Marta is that she's tall, she's lanky, she carries around a big imposing pickaxe that kind of looks like a cross. I mean, a much more scary cross. And she's got a hell of a rasp. Like, I don't see her singing any soothing songs anytime soon. And because you never actually fight her when she does finally meet her fate, it's because of the weather. Number five, Pyramid Head is, well, iconic. 
We're going to talk about Pyramid Head in Silent Hill 2, but it bears mention that there's so much Pyramid Head across the Silent Hill franchise that it can be easy to think that he's been there since the beginning, but absolutely not. He is an addition in Silent Hill 2. He's a manifestation of the protagonist, James Sunderland's guilt and desire to be punished for the death of his wife. And basically during the course of the game, you keep seeing him kill somebody that looks just like his wife. Yeah, Pyramid Head kind of doesn't play around. However, she keeps coming back the whole time, so clearly James just has to get the message, you know? And ultimately, that's what defeats Pyramid Head and the other Pyramid Head who happens to be in the room. Yet, you end up having to fight two Pyramid Heads, and any other time you fought Pyramid Head, you can't kill him. And you really can't kill him this time either. The thing that actually kills him is James realizing that he doesn't need to be punished for what happened. His wife had cancer. And technically, he doesn't really defeat them either. The two Pyramid Heads commit suicide, implying that really unless they kill themselves, there's really no way to get rid of them. Either way, it's such an imposing bad guy they had to keep him around for a lot more Silent Hill games. And whether it's one monster or a bunch of different monsters, Pyramid Head is actually awesome. Number four. Mr. X from Resident Evil 2. Now, Mr. X isn't fast or anything like that. I mean, unless you shoot his hat off in the Resident Evil 2 remake. Then he's kind of, you know, irritated to the point of putting a little more effort in. That being said, Mr. X can't be killed. Not with guns and not by you. Really, the only thing you can do with Mr. X is gracefully avoid him. If that's not the route you want to take, you can, you know, use grenades or shotgun or something like that to shoot him until he kneels down, which gives you kind of a temporary respite from him following you, but it's just that, temporary. Mr. X will relentlessly pursue you until you move on, basically. In theory, you could play cat and mouse with the guy all day, although I don't know that I would recommend that. There's a lot to see in that Resident Evil 2 remake. Number three is Jack Baker from Resident Evil 7, who, like everybody else in the game pretty much, is infected with a mold that gives him a super strength. It's more than that, though. As Jack seems to be above everybody else as far as this goes, he basically constantly appears throughout the entire game as a super strength individual that you can't really do a lot to. Even when you chainsaw this guy to death, he's not dead, just mutates into a big monster and you have to freeze him with a serum that is supposed to kill him, but just freezes him. Honestly, it kind of sucks to kill him. He's one of the more amusing, scary bad guys that you can't kill no matter how hard you try in any game. He's got a lot of personality, which sets him apart from a lot of these types of monsters, I think. Most of them are pretty mindless. He's not. He's witty. Although, I mean, I wouldn't, like, stop to have a conversation with him or anything. Still gotta get away from him most of the time. Number two is Daniela from Haunting Ground, who you can't kill. You can't kill anybody in Haunting Ground. You don't have a weapon. You have to do things that are clever. Daniela is, I mean obviously very similar in that respect to a lot of the characters we've talked about today. However, Daniela is possibly one of the more unsettling ones. She can't feel, and she carries with her a sort of resentment for the player, because everybody else in the castle has taken such an interest in her. Daniela also has this slow build-up where she's kind of not really a antagonist until she finally kind of loses it, breaks some glass, comes after you with it, and then kind of just either pursues you or continues about her maid tasks, which I, I'm not actually even sure which one I consider weirder. Finally, number one is several characters from Outlast as well as its DLC whistleblower, the first being the hulking, massive, massive problem known as Chris Walker. Basically just a really big dude who's constantly walking around, patrolling, trying to find anybody to kill, comes in at six, nine and a half which is a big person, and being you can't actually kill anybody in Outlast, he's quite a danger. From the Whistleblower DLC, there's Frank Manera, who looks nothing like that. He's actually a smaller, more gaunt frame, and a cannibal. And the other is Eddie Gluskin, who was abused as a child and attempted to take all of that out on other people. A couple of bonuses for you are Alma from Fear. We've talked about Alma in other videos. She's basically the key figure in the whole thing. Alma appears as a little girl initially, but as it turns out, is an adult who is more or less stored and causes a lot of the events of the game using telepathy. She can also kill you instantly. And our final one of the day, 
is the gatherers from Amnesia the Dark Descent. Well, obviously you can't really do anything about them, but avoid them. They have really just a horrible look to them. Fortunately, they're not terribly thorough as far as looking into where the player is hiding, so you can get away from them, but they're a constant thing at all times in the game. What are some enemies that you know of that you can't really get rid of, just relentlessly pursuing you throughout the whole game? Leave us a comment, let us know what you think. If you like this video, please click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week, and the best way to see them first is, of course, the subscription. So click subscribe, and don't forget to click the notification bell. As always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at FalconTheHero. We'll see you next time, right here on Game Ranks.